what's happening crypto fam happy happy monday good morning and welcome back to love for crypto i'm scott it's a pleasure to have you here i appreciate you taking the time out to consume the content so thank you this morning i want to talk about basically the internet of value interoperability um maybe the interledger protocol interoperability baby so i noticed an article um from last month with chris hoskinson saying that the crypto world needs that wi-fi moment where users can work with any blockchain seamlessly more than it needs a dominant network what he means by that is if you want the internet you don't worry about the hardware you're buying do you you don't do you you you, you may worry about the hardware for function and what you're going to actually do on the internet. But you don't think about, oh, I'm going to go out and buy Vodafone's hardware to have Vodafone internet. I'm not going to go and buy EE. Not that I can't buy an EE router just to go on EE. Yeah, you can have different routers on different networks, different networks on different routers. And this is what he was saying in this story, in this article. He said there'd be no need for the dominant blockchain as much as there's no dominant Wi-Fi router. He believes there'll be an internet of blockchains that are fully interoperable. Cardano is one of a breed of Ethereum killers, smaller, faster networks with DeFi capabilities. I don't like that term anymore, Ethereum killer. I mean, anything's going to kill off Ethereum. I think, if anything, they're going to um, help Ethereum lower its fees and speed up its transactions with the interoperability. Apologies for the sniffles, guys. I've got a massive cold. It's why I didn't do the content that I originally planned to do over the weekend on KSP. Bad cold. I've not got COVID. I can still taste shit. So I've literally just got a little mild cold. Slash possible flu, considering my back's cold. But yeah, we're still tasting and smelling. And I've got a corona test to take later on, so we should be okay. We should be okay. If I do explode snot out my face, apologies. And I will try and cover it as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> oh. <coughs> So, Hoskinson doesn't believe any blockchain will be dominant in the years to come. Even the so-called Ethereum killers like Cardano. Much like, when the in much like when the internet became part of daily life. Consumers ceased to question which manufacturer made some of the key pieces of hardware. It, meant it made the connectivity possible. You're not asking, is this a Samsung router? Is this an Apple router? And my hope is that that's what's going to happen in the industry. Where Cardano is infrastructure, Ethereum is infrastructure, Bitcoin is infrastructure. Of course, we can paint under the hood. And business governments and people who care about these things will care about them. But at the end of the day, if it's going to work for everybody, excuse me, we have to have that Wi-Fi moment where it's consumer friendly. And it just works on your phone. You can just set a transaction. You can seamlessly move between things. It does legitimately. We've said it, haven't we? In the past, the interoperability of value screen. Now, we've got the interoperability of data screen, where you, you go, I'm going to send a PDF, and it's like, where do you want to send it to? Is it going to Google Cloud? Is it going to OneDrive? Are you going over email? Do you want to send it over Facebook? Do you want to send it over LinkedIn? What are you sending it over, mate? Well... We are going to get that with value. When you're going to go and send someone value and your phone's going to end up like, what, what, what network are you sending it to, mate? Halifax, Santander, XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. Which network's it going to? And you'll pick a network you're going to send value to and then you'll send the value there. And it won't even have to be the fact that you're sending ADOR to Cardano. Already right now, you look at Uphold. I want to put some dot on uphold. We'll send XRP to your dot wallet. Just have a look in the wallet address and Interledger protocol link to it. It's it's doable. 
you can already send XRP to several wallets on Uphold and it not land as XRP, it lands as something else. So that's a merchant consumer decision. Merchant's going to be like, I want pounds, I want dollars, or I want you to get the fuck out of my shop. It's up to the mer it's, it's up to the merchant. And the consumer's going to be like, well, I want to spend BTC, I want to spend XRP, or I might just want to spend GBP. It's just, it's just like, I, I, don't, I don't care what you, what you fucking spend. There's going to be no argument like that. Think of the W3C. In the future, there'll be no payments. The consumer's going to walk into the shop, see the currencies that they can spend that are available to trade in that in that establishment. And they're just going to purchase what they want with that. And there'll hardly even be a conversation between a customer, consumer, or a merchant. Mm -mm -mm. In the future, there will be no payments. Do you feel like you've sent someone a letter when you send them a text message? We went back to 1985 now. And was like, oh, this email's coming. This email's coming. Email is coming. In the future, there'll be no letters, mate. In the future, there'll be no letters. What? There's still letters. Fucking 20. You could have said, you could have legitimately said that in 1985 and 2021. There's still fucking letters. But I hadn't sent a letter for fucking years, mate. I don't send letters. I receive them off people that still send me letters instead of emails. And I could still say it now, in the future, there'll be no letters. It will all be emails, text messages, WhatsApp messages. Now, some people don't see a text message as a letter, but it is a correspondence. You've typed a correspondence just because you've not dated it and all that shit like you would on, on, a, on a formal letter. It's an informal correspondence most of the time. That's a letter, but you haven't felt like you've sent a letter. Now, let's flip that to payments. You walk in a shop, look up there, we accept XRP, Bitcoin, and ADOT. Oh, sweet, I'll just get that wallet open. Boom, boom, I'm going to pay with that today. Bam, shop's like, yeah, no danger, sweet, mate. What are you having? And you're like, I'll take that, 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 and that. Shop's like, sweet. I'm going to take your money out your wallet. Boom, bish, bash, bosh, my little contract met. Traded. Traded. It's extremely interested. Hoskinson has said himself, it's less about competition and dominance and more about blockchains working together. That's probably going to happen. We're going to live on an internet of blockchains. Right now, the various blockchains can't yet connect to one another. But thanks to so-called layer zero protocols like Polkadot, this interoperability will become reality. I actually am um, super, super surprised and shocked that Interledger Protocol isn't it in the limelight yet. I mean, like we said, we always go back to that and the W3C. Um, how, it's, how it's not in the, in the forefront, I don't really know, to be perfectly honest. But the reason everyone keeps looking the Wi-Fi moment, this moment, pro IP internet protocol, we need something like that. It's because the look into the internet and lessons learned from the internet on how to build a new internet. Like we've always said, we've, we've, we've internet of value, internet of data, and we're going to learn internet of value. So the look in, the lessons learned, the internet's evolution is a blueprint for blockchain interoperability. With the evolution of blockchain technology, there are many lessons we can glean from how the first global communications network evolved, particularly when it comes to connecting distinct systems and protocols. While the internet enables users to seamlessly share and exchange information across the geographic regions and time zones, it has failed to deliver many fundamental properties such as authentication, traceability and inclusivity. It's required to establish trust and secure information exchange between users. These are some of the properties that Web 3.0 and blockchain technology aims to deliver. As we're building these new decentralized networks, it's crucial 
that we learn everything we can from the internet's evolution. So they're taking what they learn, building an interoperable internet of data and what that lacked, value, authentication, traceability, things just said, and it's going to implement them in blockchain interoperability and web 3.0. Web 1, anyone who's watching now, I don't really know. Web 1.0 email correspondence. Web 2.0 was media, YouTube, social media, Facebook. And Web 3.0 is value. Now, we can do it through other ways. Web 1.0, you no longer needed the post office to send a letter. You could send one via email. Web 2.0, you no longer needed BBC to run a TV program. You just do a YouTube channel. Yeah. You could build your own brand without a middleman. Send a letter without a middleman. Build a brand without a middleman in 2.0. 3.0, send value and be your own bank without a middleman. Although the term blockchain is now widely used across industries, the concept remains enigmatic to men. I simply put, a blockchain is a decentralized ledger of information that is stored and maintained across a distributed network of computers, rather than with one centralized authority. A key distinction compared to classical distributed protocols is that the blockchain protocol remains secure even when some of the computers on the network act maliciously. The result, the records of information recorded on the blockchain are virtually tamper-proof, and hence anyone can verify information recorded in it. Though hard to believe three decades ago the term the internet stirred similar feelings of confusion among the general public who had not yet realised the potential of the technology. There's a lot of people going to be getting mind blown over the next several years. Today, most have gained a thorough appreciation of the internet's capabilities and we take this technology for granted. For many, the internet is now as indispensable as electricity. However, the execution of the simplest tasks we perform on the internet relies on multiple layers of infrastructure from protocols to APIs that were built over decades. The concept, uh, from concept to critical infrastructure. In contrast, we are only at the advent of understanding blockchain's full potential. The impact of blockchain is not as immediately obvious in our day-to-day -day lives as that of the internet. But just like the internet made it possible to frictionlessly share information, blockchains promise to enable users to exchange value, assets, and verifiable information with absolute trust. App. Absolute app. Dov absolute. I'm saying app. Absolute trust. I, I don't know if you've noticed I'm trying to speak properly <laughs> lately. I've been three, three. I've been saying three properly, three. And it's actually made me do shit like fist, fist, instead of fist. So I've actually, uh, in, in, three, a lot of English people say free, free, free with an F, free, but it's not free, F-R-E-E, it's three. I started saying three more, but then it's made me do th when I'm supposed to be doing an F. It's fucking hard. And I've literally just realised I actually say absolute instead of absolute. Absolute, absolute, what the, me, what? I don't know what's going on in our heads. When people compare the potential of blockchain and the internet, what they're really referring to is Internet Protocol Suite, known as the Transmission Control Protocol, excuse me, Internet Protocols. That's TCP, IP, the stack of protocols. We're showing you the stack, the ILP. I, I, it's got it surely goes back to that at, at some point this is where it starts getting slightly confusing we've got ripple um the w3c interledger ilp ready to go for five for six years now and hardly anyone mentions it when talking about interoperability there's going to be people like oh Scott, but what about quant what about quant? i can't use quant so fuck off with that shit Right. I'm not saying it's not a good investment vehicle. You should already be a millionaire off it. I hold my hands up with that loser. I will take that L, mate, will you? you, you 
There's too many people online giving people shit for not buying tokens that already should have made them a millionaire. Just shut the fuck up and go and enjoy your money, mate. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Where do you, like, what? You enjoy other people fucking missing out on shit. Like, get, get off me fucking thing. You know the script. But yeah, it makes you wonder why they're not talking about the interoperability a little bit more in regards to ILP. Because this is even mentioning it now, like, for this to get there... Yeah, the unique properties of blockchain is that it enables everyone to share a common ledger and compose applications. A decentralized exchange built on Ethereum may query exchange rates, lending borrow rates, and any other information it deems relevant to offer a competitive exchange rate. Unfortunately, as we enter the multi-chain, the multi-chain universe, we break this composability and shared liquidity. Applications built on each network can't connect putting blockchain a step behind in the world wide web no, they can connect just connecting to ledger protocols api and it's done ask up old they've done it <laughs> right seriously it just needs building out up old have done it ilp like i said i can send xrp to almost any wallet in up old and it lands at the currency i actually want it to and doesn't have to land in xrp Interledger protocol, interoperability, but Charles is not wrong. We do need that Wi-Fi moment, that little Eureka moment. And I honestly do think it's going to come when the mainstream media accept XRP as one of the fastest assets and accept Interledger protocol as the new protocol governed by the W3C. It's a no-brainer for me and always has been. You've noticed, anyone who's been watching since 2018 knows this. We've just got to carry on being patient. And on that note, you know the script. You know the script. Invest in yourself. Invest in the internet of value. Turn some hobbies into revenue. Live long and hold all the flaming lot, mate. Yeah, get it staked. Get it baked. Create some generational wealth. Leave a legacy and get happy yeah wishing health and happiness to you and yours guys that is the main thing we do is just get happy just do what makes you happy fuck everyone and everything else yeah enjoy your week college tomorrow i'm gonna try ksp vids but when i'm being i'm spending a lot of time in bed trying to shake this cold so as soon as the cold's gone ksp is on me we're gonna we're gonna do that space program shit mate no mistake um, so yeah, stay tuned for that, and enjoy the week, yeah, winter's coming baby, winter's coming, we love crypto, love Cardano, we love the internet of value, interoperability, and we love you, so peace out, and I'll see you on the next one.